Welcome to Broad Ideas. It's our last episode of the year. It's our last episode of the year. Now, you all may notice there is a void. Yeah, uh, Steve left. (laughs) Was his name? That was his name. Yeah, Steve, we got an exorcist to come and forcibly remove Steve (laughs) from Rachel's house. Rob is full of the jokes today. Um, No, Olivia is not here because Shepard is sick um, and they cannot be here. They, not like Shepard's here, but Olivia. Sometimes. Sometimes Shepard's here. She's here for the interview. She's here for the interview. She's 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 going to come real quick because Wilson's about to walk in. (laughs) And then. She's not here for this. Or after. <laughs> um, yes, but Wilson, so Wilson Bethel, dear friend of mine, uh, actually, he one of his first jobs, if not his first job, he says it in the interview, so you guys can tell me, um, was on the OC. Who did he play on the OC? He was like, you know, like— Guy a, number four at party? No, he and I were like at the kissing booth together, and he was like a jock or something. I don't know. But it's kind of funny. That was like his first job. And then he and I went on to work on Heart of Dixie together. He was my love interest. um, And I love him dearly. And he came to talk to us today. And I hope everybody enjoys the conversation. Let's welcome Wilson. Now I have chicken fries in my head, Casper. You have what? I like my chicken fries. Do you know? Yeah. How do you feel about country music? We're recording everywhere, yes? I don't, I'm, uh, I think I'm in, I'm not, I don't know enough about it Good. to, uh, um, to have an opinion. I'm I glad. like, I like some old country music. Mm-hmm. Um, like what? I mean, like Patsy Cline and oh, like yeah. Hank Williams, you know, Hank Williams yeah, yeah. and Johnny Cash. I don't know Johnny. Honestly, I don't know Johnny Cash that much. But you I mean, would I know, know some Johnny like Cash. Like if Walk yeah. the Line came on. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but, uh. And then, like, I, there's, like, I really like uh, Towns Van Zandt a lot, but he's not really kind of, like, and he's more, like, singer-songwriter. You're, like, a you? really, like, Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, I'm, like, really into country music. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And especially, like, contemporary country. I don't know. I have, like, a weird relationship to it because my, my mom loved country music when I was, uh, oh. like, post-divorce, like, when I was a kid. And so she that's would, what was getting her through or yeah exactly yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. um and she would like wake up she would wake us up with it she oh, would like what she would like start black and my mom wakes up my mom wakes up at like 4 30 in the morning whoa and i mean she wouldn't start at 4 30 but she would <laughs> start um playing like um who are her go-to she liked randy travis a lot mm-hmm. she liked, she likes she loved dolly music. Park. Uh, yeah, she doesn't. Same. I don't think she listens to it anymore. It was like a, really? it was like a post divorce phase that was extremely potent <laughs> for probably like a like seven or eight years of 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 um of my childhood. But she really was aggressive about it. We had a <laughs> we had a um, I mean this is full uh, truth. We had a life size Dolly Parton cutout in what? our dining room for what? Like five years. Like a cardboard oh. cutout. Did you have to like pray to her or like? We might as well have. Yeah. I mean, she was like, like, I wish we had she that. was like my mom's no. lesbian lover basically in the house because she, everything else she was idolized. Speaking of lesbian lover cutouts, do you remember when you, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. remember when which, you had a life size cutout of yeah. Ellen? Oh. Was Ellen? I had Britney Spears. You had Ellen. I don't those remember Ellen. Very, Ellen those are two very different. <laughs> gave you uh, one of her. Icons. Who did? Ellen DeGeneres gave me a life size cutout of her. Yes, oh. I have no recollection. Okay, of this. wow. I definitely had Britney right. Spears circa Pepsi commercial cutout then did that Ellen somebody DeGeneres took from a Seven Eleven and brought to Leah and my condo. Okay, no, it was Ellen. You had an Ellen one at one point. I don't. I, this is no offense to Ellen that I don't remember. I have no memory of anything ever. But that's pretty awesome. And but I'm also just kind of generally surprised that have like 
I don't know, maybe this is like a woman thing or maybe this is just a not me thing. Like do a life lot of people cutouts? just like have life size cutouts in their house? I I've never had one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. No. I just want to make sure like late, apparently Rachel has cycled through multiple yeah. different life size cutout phases. Yeah. Um, I mean, who's in there now? I don't I know. I mean, yeah. Who's yeah. Let's yeah. open the closet and see. Yeah, exactly. She's like, well, I've got my Monday cutout, my Wednesday cutout. It's kind of amazing though. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's like Wait, a friend all the time. So was it your mom... Was it just you and your brother? No, we have. Uh, I have an older sister too. Okay. Um, so there were three of us uh, that all uh, grew up in the same house together, and then um, it's a blended family. My dad uh, remarried <clears throat> when I was, I guess, kind of finishing high school, and and uh, they had my dad and his wife had a son together. So I have a, a 22 year old brother. Got it. And then his wife also had three kids from her previous marriage. So oh, you have a big family. Yeah. Big old yeah. blended yeah. family. Yeah. Yeah. How old were you when your parents divorced? Five. You were young. Yeah. Yeah. And your mom, for people who don't know. Yeah. Oh. Give her a little oh, shout oh, out. Great. Yeah. <laughs> You're uh, welcome. <laughs> my mom is a writer. Mm-hmm. She's a, a pretty well-known writer in certain circles and certain demographics. Um, her name is Joyce Maynard. She, uh, yeah, I mean, she's been doing it her whole life. She's been a, a, a writer since she was, she started writing for Seventeen Magazine when she was like 13 years old. Oh my That's gosh, so that cool. is so yeah. cool. I mean, she was like a stupid overachiever. Yeah. Like, you know, she was, you know, that, she was that annoying kid who was like <laughs> writing to magazines as a, you know, a preteen, basically, like I want to write for I want to write for you. You know, and here's writing samples. And <laughs> That's like, so but cool. She did. It's cool and it's weird. I mean, <laughs> I think the thing that's <laughs> tough about it is like, I, know, I mean, obviously, I have a particular take on it, but like, you don't you don't become that person unless you're being driven to be that person. And her parents were driving her to be that person. Oh. She had like she had extreme her. I mean, they used to do writing critiques in their house, like on, I mean, like, you know, sit the family down and they would like, you know, take apart each other's writing. But did your parents ever do anything like that with you or your brother? Yeah, they locked us up in closets. And uh, (laughs) and, once once the composition (laughs) book was full, then we could come out. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, I think it was definitely not to the extreme of, of, uh, my mom's childhood for sure. Right. But there was a version of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a version of that, especially with my brother and me. Let's right. hear it. Um, what you <laughs> Let's go. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I was funny. I was just, I was just talking about this with a friend, I guess the other day, but um, yeah, I guess early on, my father is also a painter and a, a visual artist. And my mom was obviously a writer. And early on, my brother and I, who were very, were close in age and also just like very close, um, it was sort of determined that my brother was a visual artist and I was a writer. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. And then even though we both had much broader artistic and other interests um, that like spilled outside of those lines, Mm -hmm. um, but those were reinforced, especially by the time we got to like high school. That was like those line, those um, roles were really kind of pushed, sort mm-hmm. of in a way. Mm-hmm. And um, and it was weird in hindsight <laughs> <laughs> um, because yeah, my brother is an incredible artist, mm-hmm. um, but I also loved art, and then would feel sometimes like um, I was sort of like out of my lane or something lane. like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And and vice versa. My brother is also a terrific um, writer, and, and we also just had broad interests. And my brother ended up going into music, like he's yeah, um, and he still does visual art as well. But um, and how is he? How is he? Yeah, he's amazing, man. He's great. <laughs> he's got two like glorious, wonderful little girls. We get does to see he? A lot. Yeah, Aww, he's got a oh my god, six and a half and a four and a <gasps> half year old. That's so, so awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. He, they're doing um, they're all doing, girls. You have a girl. This Wait, how old's your baby? A lot of girls. Yeah. Um, uh, my baby is eleven months, almost. 11. Oh my god, she's Aww. almost one. Yeah. Holy she's shit, it's almost been a year. Yeah, it's crazy. 
Okay. Well, we want to, how's it been? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, How's it going? It's been amazing. It's the best thing in the world, right? It's, it's, it's right up there. Yeah. 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 I mean, drugs are pretty good. Uh, (laughs) Depends on from where. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. No street drugs cut with whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm into. I'm cool. I'm cool. Then babies. Yeah. Then babies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, I mean, it's, we got super lucky. I mean, we got lucky. We also worked really hard to like, when I say we, my wife (laughs) worked really hard to like get things dialed in, in such a way that, um, we have not run into, and some of that again was probably luck too, but we have not run into a lot of first time parent um, pitfalls that mm-hmm. um, has just made this year been much more about just the pure joy experience of, of her, of the, yeah. uh, and cause she's, you know, yeah. So we, we're, we're like, well rested and <laughs> we have well like system. rested oh. we have, how like, does that work <laughs> we she's been sleeping through the night since she was two and a half months old you're so fucking lucky. yeah that's gross <laughs> yeah yeah it's disturbing <laughs> yeah i know i know it's a weird it's not yeah. a good thing no, to say out okay loud, i have a new but, niece who's four months old yeah and she sleep well it goes in phases really? but like she was super young and sleeping through the night like 10 hours yeah what? yeah, yeah. same yeah. yeah you know what like to the ex- but this is all we'll talk when she's a teenager. Right, exactly. There's gonna be no, there's gonna there's gonna be a hard left turn somewhere. Um but yeah, my wife is like a systems person. Mm. So which I am one hundred percent not. I'm very uh, good at think? implementing <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm very good at implementing systems mm-hmm. um and being like I can fall into somebody else's routine pretty well. Um but uh you're all over the place. Yeah, I'm all over the place. <laughs> um so, I mean, like, sh- my wife literally has, like, come up with, like, solutions basically for everything. That's oh, wow. And they, nice. all, they yeah. all weirdly work. It's, yeah. like, it's like fucking witchcraft, bizarro shit. But, like, we literally took our 10 month, 10 and a half month old baby camping for two nights, two, like, two weekends ago. It's amazing. And she was, like, napping on schedule and sleeping through the night. Dude. In fucking, like, in a tent. That's Where'd you go, Kim? Amazing. Uh, up in Malibu at like Leo Carrillo Beach. Oh, so yeah. like proper yeah. tent, camping. tent camping. But a tent. Right? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool. It was incredible, honestly. And um, it's good to start young too. And then they just- Because she's not walking yet, right? No. She's not walking. That's why it's doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Know. Yeah. But- um, Are you going to- Can you share her name or do you not want to? I can share her name. <laughs> it is Una. 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 Yeah. Oh, I that's knew it, but sweet. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, you refresh sure I my memory. It. <laughs> Basically, that's my main thing for all the questions. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just the best thing in the world. And like when we finished Heart of Dixie, like I was massively pregnant with Briar. Yeah, no kidding. And that's kind of why, I don't know. I, yeah. They say it's kind of why it ended. Yeah. But whatever. Um, <laughs> but that was so long because Briar's turning nine in a couple weeks. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. It's yeah. fucking crazy. That's, that's insane. So she's in third grade? She's in third grade. third grade. Yeah, she's in third grade. And it insane. goes by so fucking fast. But it's the best thing in the world. Um, but I, well, I want to talk about- What kind show. of a mother do you think you are? Oh, Jesus. Well, what? I don't mean like- Whose podcast is this? <laughs> I'm, I'm allowed to ask questions you are allowed too. To ask We're questions. old friends in this room. We I are. Yeah, know. you can ask any What question. kind of mother? Yeah. Like if you were to like- <sighs> Yeah. Sum it up. Well, or like what? I don't know. Yeah, like I, and I don't mean like. How do you like? What's your approach? I guess sort of. Like, what's your uh, yeah? Yeah, I I wouldn't say like I'm a systematic mother. Like yeah. I the schedule and all that. Yeah. I'm definitely more. Briar's like still in my bed. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So if that tells you anything, yeah. But it's really like we have such a hardcore close bond. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm a fully involved mom, but I also never, ever have put myself first in any way, probably to a fault in right. some areas. Yeah. So I guess my approach would be, I, I am too all in. I don't know. <laughs> what what would, how would you say it? No, I think your, <laughs> I think your approach is actually very similar to mine in the sense of you're an intuitive parent. That's a good way to put it. You're not about what the right article is. You're not like doing it based on no. what people say you should or shouldn't yes. do. It's all based pretty much on intuition. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So that's a really that good that's, way to put it. Yeah. This is why I have her. 
Um, and is that you and you then you feel like you're also that. Totally. And yeah. I think t- to be honest, I think I'm also that way. Like yeah. left to my own devices. Yeah. If I was single parenting, <laughs> there'd be a oh whole boy. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. a whole different fucking uh, situation. I feel like you like sent a picture like I don't know. We were on a text chain. And you sent a picture of like you got her dressed that day, and it was oh, like yeah. beanie, and, like fucking like or yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. not like. I was like yeah. See, yeah, I could use systems. Like I'm not a systems think, person. Yeah. So it would probably for people be like us. Yeah. I think it's a really good balance to have a partner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like I could yeah. benefit from yeah. that. Absolutely. I don't. I don't. I don't have that. It's also your your partner is also more like you. <laughs> He is, I mean, he's definitely uses his head a lot more than I do. Like right. he weighs the options. You, you use your fists. I, no, I go straight. You just fucking fight. I go straight on fists. No, I go straight on intuition. Uh-huh. I'll be like, yeah. I don't feel like that's right. And he'll be yeah. like, well, let's look at the data. And he's logical. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. He's logical, right. yeah. but we both need that. someone to come in and type A us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right. we're like. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I like your husband's style, which is like, I'm going to look at a bunch of data, yeah. crunch numbers, and then not know anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to make you accurate. read a bunch of fucking spreadsheets, <laughs> and then he's just going to leave you with that. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll still go with my gut. Right. I'll be like, exactly. like I said, it's exactly. option A. <laughs> and he's right. like, so what did you decide? Because um, I didn't really actually know what, s- what to make of all that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I think it would be helpful to have a partner the opposite. I think, you know, Briar's dad's the opposite in the sense of like, Articles and facts and things. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm I like see that. completely the other way. Right. Like, I don't know. <laughs> right. You Article know. and fact averse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Alternative facts. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I believe this. <laughs> yeah, I go like, based on alternative <laughs> yeah. facts only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you sure we need to cut the umbilical cord? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, because I was thinking it doesn't feel right. <laughs> One of the best pieces of advice I got from a doctor when... So we were, when I was pregnant, we were going to different doctors and we didn't know if we should circumcise. Mm. Like Mm. these are big questions that it never even occurred to us. Oh, you're going to have to make these decisions. It's not just one size fits all. And so we went and interviewed all these doctors and they were like, yes, you should. And the other ones were like, no, you shouldn't. And then when we found our doctor, he's like, quiet the noise and listen to your heart. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, like you are our doctor. That's (laughs) it. I think that decision in particular, I'm I'm like kind of extremely relieved just for that decision alone that I don't <laughs> yeah. have a boy because that's a that's a fucking doozy, man. Yeah, it is. Um, it did is. you guys know it was a girl the whole time? Did you find no, out? We found out um, late. I mean, we had uh, we got we did IVF, mm-hmm. so um, we could have known like when it was implanted. Oh, yeah. oh we, right. They, you know, from, right, right, sure. From moment one. Um, but we waited until I think like seven months of pregnancy. Or oh something. my gosh, mm. that's really something late. like that. Yeah. What? Um, what? Why then? I don't know to build the anticipation or something. <laughs> I thought why did we wait so to long? Build the nursery. I, what's that? <laughs> I thought you were going to say to build the nursery. Right. Like, well, yeah. No, that waited even longer. Um, <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. Uh, I I think it was honestly just to like yeah to like have this thing to kind of look forward to. Yeah. Like. I, well, part of it also was I didn't want to know. Didn't. And so it was a process oh, okay. of like slow me slowly coming over to her side. Yeah. Um, and then it was really sweet. Like, you know, we had the little envelope and we went up to Idlewild for a weekend, you know, kind of like. Baby you know, moon. And and uh, exactly. Yeah. And, and like, uh, you know, hiked up to this like rocky point, watch the sunset and open that thing. Oh, yeah, that's so nice. sweet. Kind of, you know, it's not the same thing as. You know, setting off fireworks in the <laughs> national forest and causing a wildfire. That is <laughs> Opening an envelope yeah, totally exactly. worked. Broad Ideas is supported by Quince. I love gift giving, but it can really add up. That's why this holiday season, I am shopping Quince. Quince is my go-to place for luxury essentials at affordable prices for everyone on my list, including me. Quince offers a range of high quality items with prices within reach, like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters from $50, washable silk tops and dresses, cotton sweaters, and comfy pants. I love me some comfy pants. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. That's why I'm giving the gift of Quince's buttery soft cashmere to my nearest and dearest this year. 
By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. And I love that. My favorite new thing I've discovered with Quince is their bedding. Oh my gosh, I got the cutest gauze quilt and I am so excited to put it on my bed as soon as it arrives. Take the drama out of planning an outfit and upgrade your closet with Quince today. Go to quince.com slash ideas for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash ideas and get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash ideas. Broad Ideas is supported by Blissey. All right, let me tell you guys something. I never thought I would be a person that packed my pillowcase with me when I travel. But ever since I started sleeping on the Blissey Silk pillowcase, I cannot sleep without it. So now it comes with me everywhere I go. It is time to upgrade your sleep with Blissey's award-winning 100% Mulberry Silk pillowcases. The holidays are just around the corner, and if you are looking for the best gift you can give, look no further than a Blissey Silk pillowcase. Silk is honestly the most luxurious gift to give your friends or family. These are the perfect gift for any occasion. Plus, it comes in gift-ready packaging. They'll be sure to love. Give yourself the gift of Blissey today, and you'll want one for every room of the house. And do you struggle to find that cool side of the pillow all the time? Blissey Silk pillowcases are temperature-regulating and have naturally insulating properties, so if If you sweat and overheat while you sleep, Blissey is for you. Blissey silk pillowcases are the best silk pillowcases on the market. They have a ton of different prints and colors and they make great gifts because there's an option for literally anyone. Men love them too. They have over 1.5 million raving fans and you could be next. Try now risk-free for 60 nights at blissey.com slash Rachel and get an additional 30% off. That's B-L-I-S-S-Y dot com slash Rachel and use code Rachel to get an additional 30% off. Give yourself the gift of a good night's sleep with Blissey. But how was the IVF journey for you? Terrible. No, I I mean, no, it wasn't terrible. Was it It, like multiple tries or? We, no, I mean, in that regard, it was fairly straightforward. And again, like, you know, I know that so many people have incredibly fraught journeys with that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm conscious of that when I say that, like, yeah, we were very fortunate. Um, We did a couple of extractions, Mm -hmm. um, but the first, um, embryo that we implanted took. Wow. So that was amazing. And that's yeah. her daughter. And um, that's part of her name being Una is like, she was like um, the first, uh, the first extraction we did, we only got one egg out of it. Mm. And, uh, wow. and, we, and, and was, that was, her, was and she, oh my God, God I just got to know. Una. <laughs> so sweet. You guys uh, are so yeah. blessed. So yeah. blessed. It's not always that easy. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. Wow. But I think IVF, I mean, I think IVF is just an incredibly, obviously the, you know, when it works out, the, um, the results are, you know, worth anything basically. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it's a lot, it's a lot for a woman. It's like all the, the, I think it's just an incredible amount of pressure. It's an incredible amount of anxiety Mm. about doctor's appointments and the shots, the mm-hmm. hormone situation is just fucking bananas. Were you helping her with the shots? Yeah. I mean, well, she's, <laughs> I'm like very needle averse. So she, <laughs> she, and she is the opposite. She like watches like surgeries on YouTube. Yeah. So she's like, Ooh, cool. I get to fucking play doctor. <laughs> like I'm, you know, but, um, but again, like it's tough because, um, she's a very systems oriented person and is really good at that stuff. But I, that's not, you know, me is a very, it's a very, it was a steep, very steep learning curve for me to catch up to kind of like what, where I needed to be for her in that Mm -hmm. process in terms of like being a partner and, and, uh, assisting on a, on a very difficult journey that required a lot of very painstaking detail oriented Mm -hmm. process stuff, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is not me. Um, and we got there, I think sort of toward the end of it. Um, but I was also working at the time. It was just tough, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, we got there, it was tough, 
And I think it was really, yeah, it was really hard, hard on her. Um, but is it something you guys might explore again? Do you want more kids? Yeah. I mean, we definitely want more kids for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, as somebody, I think for a lot of people who grew up with siblings, like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I want, I would love for Una to have a, a, for sure. a little s- sibling, but, yeah. um, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. For sure. Yeah, Still. I'd- Still feels all pretty fresh. Well, you know, I mean, she's but, just oh, she's a baby. Yeah, yeah, it's still a baby. I mean, and, and it, yes, and also, but yeah, I know, and I'm also like, yeah, let's get going. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, uh, other factors yeah. come into that age. What you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. totally get that. No, I I often run you know because I grew up with siblings and yeah. or my brother at least um, when I was young, and I just think about Briar all the time. But she's so adamant. She's like, you're not allowed to have a baby. Wow. No, nope. okay, she's she's you're not having a baby mom. Well, yeah. it's just been us. She's almost yeah. nine, you know. Right, right, right. So she's very accustomed to right our little situation. <laughs> well, but, you know, there's no better way to shake things up than to just insert a baby into the mix. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not I, go for I it? I think it might just be the right way to get Briar out of her comfort zone to, <laughs> you know, she comes home from school one day and you've adopted just a, a baby. child. <laughs> no, but this was really interesting. So my family's in town from Tennessee and one of um, our little cousins is adopted and uh-huh. Briar, I guess, didn't know and I didn't oh. realize. She, and her older cousin, they're on the trampoline like yesterday and Abby comes running in and she's like, Briar didn't know that Caroline was adopted? And I was like, did you not? <laughs> did I not tell her? And Briar, like her face, oh. she was like, what the fuck, mom? Right. You know? And I think she felt like everybody knew right. but oh. her. Right. I know, it was such a sweet Does moment. Does Caroline know? Oh, Caroline. She uses, Caroline just turned, or she's four. She uses uses it against my cousin. She'll be like, oh. you're not my birth mom. <laughs> she's oh. four years old. <laughs> so wow. she's fully comfortable with oh it. God. Like, no problem. It's very open. They still have a relationship with the birth mom. Like, wow. all of it, you wow. know? Wow. But yeah, but Briar felt like she was the last. I didn't know. And, and we're going to bed and she goes, mom, does she miss her mom? Wow. Oh, stop. I know. I know. The, oh, get ready. There yeah. are big talks yeah, in your yeah. future. Like wow. everything, you know, wow. in life, and all the things that are going on. And, but yeah, it was really sweet. Like she was really trying to wrap her head around it. Yeah. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to explain. And, you know, you know we talked about will. adoption last night too. You did? Yeah. Are you adopting? Am I adopted? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, <I was> like- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, I know we've been friends Rachel. for fucking thirty years, but yeah. uh, I mean, did you actually? Did you know you're adopted? Yeah, yeah it's like, it's like adoption Surprise. reveal party. You know that, right? You know that, right, Olivia? Surprise, Olivia. <laughs> no, we talked about adoption because we were joking, and Jeff was like, "Oh, we're gonna have another baby to Elliot, mm-hmm. to my oldest," and he's like, "Please, please, 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 I want a girl. I want a sister." He asked if we could adopt the baby girl. What'd you say? I said yes. Jeff's not on on board. What? Uh, okay. Not yet. All right. Not yet. Yeah, I was about See, to say that's, that's you, how that's, it works. Just you, how you, you jumped work over it. to you work it slowly. Yeah, yeah, wanting to know that it was a girl. Yeah, we yeah, work yeah. our magic and get you well, to the other side. I mean, I think it's just. I feel like that's just everything. You just kind of have to like <laughs> just, just slow breaking down of your partner to like a middle ground yeah, somewhere. You know, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> just keep breaking them down. Yeah. What's compromise? Now you're going to meet me where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's compromise. That is compromise. I'll stay right here and you come over here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, I'm over Certainly here. a version and of you're it. Over there. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Has it changed you? Um, I don't know. I don't know how to answer <laughs> that. I mean, yeah. I mean, yes, obviously, I guess in, in, um, I mean, yeah, I guess uh, definitely it's changed me and, and not, I don't know. It's a, it's a strange question. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, like, I don't, um, I'm always somebody who's like resistant to that, like thing of like, you know, whatever you go on a fast for three days and you come out and you're like, oh, I see everything differently now. Mm -hmm. Or you have like some crazy drug experience and you're like, oh, I, you know, I, every changed everything for me. I just, am. I think I'm very resistant to that kind of, um sort of black and white ver- mm-hmm. vision of change. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, yes, obviously it's changed big elements of my life. Right. right. Um, and yeah. I feel like women get asked 
that so much. They're like, yeah. how has it changed you being a right. mom? But right. like when it comes to men, I don't even know if they're given the space to explore that as much oftentimes. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. For sure. Whether you're a woman or a man, I think there's probably an expectation that the answer is yes, right? Like, right. if you don't say, yes, it's changed me, you're an asshole, <laughs> kind of. Right. I well, mean, like if, a if little bit a of a dick. Child <laughs> that is like, like no. the sweetest, purest creature in the world that is entirely dependent mm-hmm. on you hasn't changed you, you're an asshole. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a fair statement. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but I also think that uh, that, you know, maybe behind closed doors, a lot of people would admit to being a, still a lot of the version of their same yeah. old self, um, even if they also feel like a tremendous, incredible amount of love toward this creature and um, the burden of protection and the mm. desire to um, sort of restructure their time in, in, mm-hmm. in different ways. Um which are all like beautiful, very natural things I think that happen, obviously. Yeah. Um, but like, I still recognize myself in the mirror. And like, you yeah, know, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. But has it made you more fearful in general at no. all? <laughs> but are you okay? But like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's yeah. not your fault. It's okay, like, we're doing yeah. goodwill hunting now. All right, I see what you guys are fucking doing here. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think a lot of times when people become parents, a lot of fear-based shit comes in. If anything, something that has become abundantly clear to me in being with my wife is that I I don't have any of the mechanisms of fear that most people do. Oh, wow. In a I very, could, I could see that. in a probably, it, it, not in a probably, in an unhealthy way. Mm-hmm. Um, it is not having those things has allowed me to live my life in an incredible, in, a, in a, an extremely free way. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, but it is also makes, it makes it very hard for me to take care of somebody else in traditional, mm. in, in traditional safety-based ways. You know, this those are genes. So interesting. Really? Yeah. Really? I just did genetic testing <laughs> and there's actual gene mutations. Right. For the fear gene. Yeah, right. And there's right. mutations oh, yeah, yeah. on it where like some your, people- your amygdala is actually bigger or smaller. Correct. Yeah. Like some people genetically right. are Wilson. predisposed- <laughs> Just busting out. To well, that's the, that's the part of your brain that produce, that literally right. like triggers fear. So do you think it's nature or nurture for that? And I'd it's love bo- I mean, it's to for hear sure how. both, uh, or at least, I mean, it's probably a lot of nurture. I, I have no idea. Like the, I, I was thinking of the reason that I've, what comes to mind in terms of a reference point is that um, that documentary about um, the mountain climber who free solo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Honnold, I think was his name, the guy who, whatever, mm-hmm. did, um, half dome. And they, at some point, I mean, talk about like that guy's on obviously like the extreme, yeah. extreme, yeah. extreme end of like, where no fear. is fear <laughs> for right. you ever? Right. And they did. They measured his amygdala. They did like an no MRI way. or something. And his amygdala basically had like shriveled up, fallen off, and disappeared. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yeah. It's not you. It's like, not yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a weird, it's, I think it's very much, I think it's very much a nurture thing. I think it's very much a nurture thing for me. But how does that show up when you say you don't have yeah, those typical fears? Like in what or- sense? Uh I mean, obviously, like, I'm not going to put my daughter, my tiny little daughter in like some super precarious right. situation. But um, in general, like I do, like my, you know, my wife is con- is constantly being like, dude, what do you think? Like, oh, I get it. What are you thinking? Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, she's, you know, like, she's fine. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. Um, What's an example? Of that? <laughs> like, what are you doing? It would make her be like, what are you doing? I mean, like Jeff taking Shepard on the Vespa with no helmet. Excuse right. me? Yeah. Like things right. like that. that maybe. I mean, and, and again, like <laughs> I have, I think I have largely at this point, like adapted. I still take all kinds of unnecessary risks for myself mm-hmm. that, um, that don't even half the time register as risks. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I have come a long way toward, you know, adapting both in terms of my partner and also the baby. 
But yeah, I mean, I guess like you little... act before you think a lot of the time. Yeah, like, like most the of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I too am intuitive. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if that's intuitive yeah. or just or fucking just bonkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so was... Is it physical or emotional or like, are you taking these risks at, like jumping out of a plane or is it career choices or how does it show up? I think it's all, I think it's all of the above. I do, Anything and everything. I, um, I don't, <laughs> I mean, if I'm being honest, it's, I am like this, I, I don't think I, this is embarrassing to admit, honestly, I don't think think about things that much. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I don't. <laughs> I do that all the I time. I do too. I don't. Um, Not to the extent of you, but. Like the 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 word consider. Wait. Is not something that I do a lot. But wait, yeah. but like, does that also lean into like consideration of another person? Yeah. Uh, and then again, like this is like stuff that I've had to like. Tr- I mean, this is like kind of deep shit, but it's like, this is. um and this is really is nurture stuff, but like, mm-hmm. I mean, I think I learned how to fend for myself and take care of myself mm-hmm. in like very deep, profound ways from a very early age. And then was like, you know, I, I mean, I moved out when I was 17. I've been on my own since then. And like, I created all these different mechanisms that basically like make my way of operating work for me. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. Which includes, to like your point of like physical stuff, like getting hurt all the time. Mm-hmm. Like throughout- By my- the way, everybody, he walked in this morning with like an ice yeah, pack this wrapped on his elbow. Wait, this is actually <laughs> true. And this, and like, this is like the, like, this is probably the longest I've gone without any like major injury uh, in my, you know, adult life. But like throughout my twenties and early thirties, I was just, you know, I was breaking bones all the time. Mm. And um but I also always took that as like the cost of doing business for having like a certain kind of like freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the same, and that was, and in a way like that's fine, right? Because that's me, that's my body. And like, okay, if I'm the dumbass who's gonna, you know, I've been hit on my bicycle by cars like three or four times. <laughs> and if I'm the asshole who's gonna get back on the bicycle and like probably get hit again, then okay, that's on me. Right. He like bikes from like, yeah. East LA. Well, to I the recognize beach. your neighborhood because I'm like, oh, I've ridden up through here a few times. He really, like, yeah, it's a perfect um, example. But the emotional thing, which is also part of that, was something I had to ad- figure out and address in a much more clear eyed way, mm-hmm. obviously, a lot sooner. And I think I started doing that in like a more, um, in a more considered way. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, in like my, you know, late 20s or whatever because it was so clear to me that the way that I had both kind of been raised and had responded to being raised and then had struck out on my path of adulthood, all of these things had made me extremely Mm self-sufficient and extremely selfish. Right, yeah. Extremely um, just uh, narrow in my vision. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you can, you hurt a lot of people that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So then it's not just breaking your bones. It's breaking hearts. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. So, and I think I've gotten a lot better at it, but it's like, you know, again, these are like, um, how does it look in your marriage? Very deep seated. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a constant. I mean, this is like the conversation that has been- That she'll be like, yo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, and it's kind of remarkable that we've made it um, as far as we have in some yeah. ways for how different we are in that way. She's from the Dominican Republic. She's mm-hmm. like extremely family and community oriented, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes to a fault. It's like, you know, very much like takes a village kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was raised like, my whole family, we were raised to be individuals. Right. Right. And divorce also tells you that that is necessary and possible. Right. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then there are other things that reinforce that over time. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah. I mean, like from early on, it was just so clear that my wife and I were just were coming from like wildly different places. And they're in, <laughs> I think like we- I mean, it's almost funny in hindsight because like 
you know, it was the kind of thing where we like fell in love and asked questions later. And mm-hmm. we were like, oh no, what have we done? <laughs> um, and now it's been like a real process. Sure. I would say like the first year and a half or something like that, when we first, maybe year, it was like this kind of like, you know, whatever, sort of like a little bit of a whirlwind. And we're just kind of like having yeah. fun. My wife didn't think it was a serious thing at all. Meanwhile, I was like, <laughs> totally like, um, like, Dialed in. Oh, okay, I'm doing yeah. this. Uh, and, but then, at, and then at a certain point we're kind of in it and we're realizing we just like, don't remotely speak the same language yeah. in terms of care, what care looks like. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's complicated stuff, but it's we have a lot hard. of conversations about it. That's so good. Yeah. That you can't. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, communication yeah. is obviously huge and you guys have been together a long time now, yeah. right? I mean, you know, not compared to some people, but six no, years. Six years. No, that's, you know, to start like that. But I think a lot of people that happens where you just fall first and yeah. don't look at all the things. But I think as you get older, that shifts. Yeah. And it's, and by the way, like would completely advise a younger version of myself, like talk about the most important thing right. ever to like consider, like yeah. consider what you, like what kind of partner you're pursuing. Right. <laughs> like, Right. Duh. Yeah. Like, and that's, I mean, like to the point where, uh, I mean, I think if I were doing it now, like if I were dating for the first time, I would yeah. almost like want to do the, like those. Um, Speed sp- dating? dating? No, no, no. Oh. no. I was going to say, what are those like uh, personality tests that- Oh, like, the yeah, Myers-Briggs. The Myers-Briggs. Like, yeah. I, would, I would almost want to do like the Myers-Briggs kind of stuff with like my partner. <laughs> like, I mean, to a, like, I mean, I don't know. Obviously that takes like some of the fun and romance out of it, but it's also just like- how aligned are we? Yeah, right. but here's the thing about alignment that I want to know what you think about because I question that myself. Like I grew up in chaos, right? right? And my husband grew up in structure. Right. And the two of us, completely different languages. Yeah. Completely. To me, I think it's the most opportunity for growth. If both of us ended up in the same as what right. we grew up in, then but we would be the same. you have the same through line though, right? Our values are aligned. Right. Our values are aligned, but our systems are yeah. completely yeah. different. Yeah. Our communications, our needs, mm-hmm. our, you know, yeah. all of those things are wildly different mm-hmm. and we have to learn each other, right? Totally. But I feel like if you end up, it's like in many lives, many masters, they say when you're with your soul group, right? That you want to reach a little bit out of vibration. Yeah. Because that's where you grow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the, looking at those things is the gift. And if you guys would be completely aligned and on it all, like where's the- No, and I- You know I what mean, I mean? I, I also have come to appreciate, obviously, like I, I very much come to appreciate that. I think that growth is super important. I think the, um, yeah, the like the degree to which I have- been forced to reckon with so many patterns, so many yes. like histories, all this stuff um, is extraordinary. And I wouldn't trade that, right. I don't think, um, for an easier relationship. Mm-hmm. Right. But let's be real. There are a lot of moments where like- Of course, you were like, sure. All I want is an easier relationship, right. you know? Yeah. Um, and, and- and it's probably also a myth when you're looking at some other couple that looks like they have an easier relationship to think that it is. But um, yeah, that's just but smoke yeah. and mirrors. Well, also sometimes they, I've looked at those two and been like, "What? Well, I don't know their karma. Right. Like whatever that right. means. Like I have looked at relationships and being like, what would that be like to be with someone so easy? Right. You know, <laughs> like no what? offense to Jeff. No but. offense to yeah, Jeff, yeah. but he's he's a tricky man. He's right. he's yeah. a, he's a tricky individual. He's well, complex. I want to know this tricky. You know yeah. what I mean? He's complex. <laughs> he's, he's complex. He's, but I have yeah. looked at people and been like, huh. I would be, I always say, and like, you know, oh, I'm not gonna say this. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you are. Get us in trouble. Come on. Do you know how many times I say shit on this podcast and like it gets to and it anyway? There's what were you gonna things. say? Well, what I was gonna say is, um, I often find that like I think I would be bored if there wasn't complexity. That's what I used to think, but now I'm like, right. that looks nice sometimes to be like e- e- nice. You say the same thing though. If don't try to front like, oh, well, that's what Jeff tells me too. What are like, we talking about in terms of complexity? <sighs> like, there's something like it's not. 
I don't know. Like, like multi-layered, multi-layered. Right. Maybe there's like a degree of difficulty somewhere. Like, oh, you want that guy with a little fucking trauma. Oh, you, want, <laughs> you want that guy who fucking just has a little fucking dirt under his fingernails. <laughs> dirt under the fingernails. Yeah, that goes along with yeah, my like yeah. swinging act yeah, yeah, mirror. Do you know? Yeah. No, but I don't know. And I say that, but maybe that's just because, you know, I don't know. I've been with, I guess I've been with all types of guys. If I, I, fuck, I gotta stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into those types of guys yeah. that you've been what? with. Types are they? <laughs> Page one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> no, I am not. I can't fucking say shit. But basically, I do believe that that's what soulmates do. Right. I think right. they come in and they show you a mirror of like, yeah. here's your stuff yeah. that you yeah. get to look at. And then you could look at other couples and be like, gosh, that looks so easy. But we don't know. A hundred percent. Yeah. What's really going on. Totally. Or totally. the why. Like maybe right. those aren't their lessons to learn. Right. Maybe if they've got- Definitely. You know. Definitely. Well, some other ish. I, it is it is <laughs> it is proven to be the case over the last six years that I have many, 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 many <laughs> lessons to learn. I mean, and, I probably could have told you that ten years yeah, ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think anybody could have. I mean, I think that's the interesting thing is that like, you know, we there's so many people around us who can see us better than we can see ourselves, you know. Mm. And uh and it's basically just a matter of figuring out a way to be comfortable enough with any of those people. Um, but your partner obviously, hopefully being like, you know, numero uno or like yeah. a best friend or whatever. Sure. You too. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that you don't recoil, you know, when somebody is able to, to have, you know, real conversations with you about that stuff. I don't think- yeah. That I, I would say like my wife is the first person who I have even like remotely allowed to um, penetrate some very like Game of Thrones depth <laughs> defensive walls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, amazing. It is amazing. And, and that's, you know, yeah, that's, that's a starting point. Do you think it was her or do you think you had been trying to penetrate those walls on your I've own. I've been trying to penetrate for a long time. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry. You set no. me up for that. And I just- I could not. could not. not. Could not. Could not. Yeah. Could yeah. not. Uh, sorry, say it again. Do you think that you had already been trying to penetrate those walls in your own life and then she came in at a time you were ready? Or do you think it was her with a chisel? Yeah, I mean, I, I think- I think I've been on like stumbling down that path for a long time mm-hmm. of trying to figure out how to um how to have a different relationship with myself, mm-hmm. you know, right. but not really knowing how to achieve that exactly. I always felt like and I thought like therapy would maybe be and it was sort of a starting point, mm-hmm. but I always found like I was too good I I could always tr- like I'm too good at charming therapists. <laughs> like, yeah. If I'm being real, I get like, it. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I can fucking, and that's why, that's why I'm suspicious of therapy. I'm like, I'm too, I'm good. I'm too good at therapy. I'm yeah. too good at like, therapy. <laughs> and that's and the first I, time and, we've heard that. Here. And by that, I don't mean like, I'm, I get I'm it. like effective mm-hmm. at it in terms of what therapy right. is supposed to accomplish. But I mean that, that like, I, in my experience, I have found like I can win over therapists. I totally get what you're saying. I get and it. And that's, completely counterproductive. Right. <laughs> right. But a good therapist will see that. Yeah. And Although they'll be like, like you've had some very you're good doing this. But it's just yeah. traditional therapy, like uh yeah. 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 And electroshock therapy. And, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like I don't know. Yeah. whatever they think. <laughs> Have you seen one for <laughs> the like, I, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But no, I mean um, that's an interesting point because that you know, people can do that like and in therapy and then so what are you getting from it? Right. Yeah. And it's, and you don't, there's, and if it's just the two of you sitting in a fucking vacuum, basically, there's not, um, there's not enough other feedbacks to right. kind of, to fill out the picture sort of, which is why I think it's so, the role of a partner yeah. is so <laughs> yeah. crazy because this is somebody who is so, who sees so much so on like a daily basis, so close. They mm. see you in every different situation. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you have a perceptive person, my wife is extraordinarily perceptive about these things. 
it's just like notes are constantly being taken. I can only imagine yeah. the amount of shit like, oh, that dude, you're hearing. It's crazy. Constantly. Yeah. You know, I think like, I think, you know, what probably started out like where I was like a novelty act at a certain point, it was like, yeah. uh, oh, wow. Like, <laughs> I need to save this man from himself. Yeah. yeah. So funny because I, I know you yeah, for a long very time. well and yeah. for a long time. Yeah. So like I could see. Yeah, sure. And I think it's great that you called in someone like your wife. Yeah. That can call it all out. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Have you guys ever done therapy together? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. how does that, how's that? Are you charming that therapist too? I mean. And your wife's calling you if out. If I'm being real. <laughs> 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 um, we, we tried, we tried, I think we, we ran, we've probably done like four or five couples therapists. Mm-hmm. Oh, diff yeah. that many different people. Yeah. Um, there were several just like abject failures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was one guy we were seeing um, together for a while, but um, she ended up not, I think, feeling great about him. Partly because he started, I think I charmed he him too much. He was charmed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now we, find, we, we, we might finally have like found a lady that, I think also like the, um, the, the, um, the delivery mechanism is important or like the, mm. the, uh, what is it? The, the way that you choose to do it is important. Like, I think what I realized is like weekly therapy was not helpful to us. Mm -hmm. Um, or at least the, that version of it. We're doing it once a month now Okay, with like a longer session once a month. And that feels for the time being like, that's oh, yeah, working. That, that works. That's great. Better. Yeah. It just doesn't weekly shit. It was just like, dredging stuff up yeah. when like we yeah. didn't necessarily, you I know, when it. we were in an okay place, then we're, I mean, whatever. No, I but, get that. And do you guys have your own as, as well? well? Yeah. I yeah. think that's really healthy. Lately, you know? my, my husband's therapist has been bothering me. Oh, oh, <laughs> do tell. Okay. Yeah. Well, cause he'll say things and he'll be like, well, so-and-so said, oh, yeah, yeah, and I'll yeah. be like, she doesn't know. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Does wait, that wait, ever happen? Again? Like he'll be like, well, well, Quoting. so and so, like he'll quote his therapist. Oh, right. She said oh, that yeah. it's totally normal yeah, no, you for can't, me. To, I mean, what I found is like, that that's Ooh. yeah, that's a non-starter if you start doing the fucking therapist quoting. It's yes, just right. <laughs> fucking horse yeah. shit. But I do I, find some therapists will just agree with you no matter what, and that's also a I don't like that. Mind. I don't. No, want me either. Because where's the productivity in it right, yeah. if they're just con like a yes man? You know? Yeah, and that's that happens. It does happen. Yeah, for sure. It's the story of my charmed therapy life. It is. Yeah. I'm just a <laughs> He's yes like, man she says women. I don't have commitment issues. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, exactly. well, you've... Tell me if this is weird. He'll never, never, never put his clothes in the dirty clothes. He hangs them off at the top. He can't is it commit. they're sweaty? No. Because I do it because they're sweaty. He does it because he's not <laughs> committed to them being dirty. Yeah, that's weird. That's, right? that's like oh, he's a, not committed to them being dirty. Okay. So it's like, maybe I'll put this t-shirt back on. Maybe. Oh, okay. It's he wants the option. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like, not going to lie. Like I'm into it as like a methodology. I mean, I kind of get that. But it's always hanging <laughs> off the thing. Yeah. I understand like the things that are annoying. Like wet towels on a bed drive me I'm crazy. I'm like, put it in the hamper. <laughs> Just go, go hey, commit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that shirt's going to be okay. non Washed. Yeah, non you know what I mean? You have, to, you have to, you know, will yourself over to a whole lot of like weird quirks. And That's really, yeah. You're just like, okay, yeah. you're, you're the guy who can't commit to fucking put his clothes in the hamper. Yeah. All right. I guess that's who I'm with. <laughs> that's what I do. And I just go, right. bloop. I mean, I, yeah. And he never ever questions if he they does. wind He'll up in He'll be like, there. where are my black? I'm like, they're in the dirty clothes. Just be thankful that that's the guy you got and not yeah. the guy who's like, oh, I've also got a second family in Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> He's from like, Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh. What if he oh, does? Wow. Uh -oh. Weird. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. It's just kind of channeling scary. some shit. Channeling some shit. <laughs> Charming and channeling left and right. Uh, yeah. That's scary. Uh, I know. Yeah. It is. There's a there's a whole spectrum of, you know, what we can put up with. And I think that um, I think that ranks relatively low. Yeah, no, I can deal yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. I can it I can ranks put relatively them in. low. The clothes <laughs> yeah. on a hamper. The how action. long have you guys been married? How long have we been married? We're together. Married? How long well, have you been together? together. 10 it'll, years? Yeah, it'll be 11 years soon. It's a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm like, yeah. I marvel at people who, you know, 
whatever. Just anything feel these relationships just feel so long. People have like been together 10 years or 15 years. I'm just like, holy shit. That's just like this long. <laughs> so like, listen to long. him. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't mean that in a bad way. Just like no, objectively. It just seems like it. crazy. But you're six years. That's a decent amount of time. I'm sure it doesn't yeah, feel like six, you know? It, feel, it, it feels like six. It feels <laughs> like I've got fucking white hair and shit now. Dude. Like shit done changed. I'm getting old. I'm like, what the fuck? Like I look back at pictures at the beginning of it. I'm like, this is a fucking youth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait until your kid's eight. And, Wait, and then you're going to be you like, what? Or I'm 39. You're 39. Yeah. yeah. Already. So you're going to be 40. I'm going to be 40. In February. In February. <gasps> February. Crazy. What? 24th. 24th. Yeah. I knew it was 20th. It's really. Is that Aquarius? Pisces. Mm. Mm. Pisces. Mm. Pisces. Sensitive souls. Yeah. Oh, Oldest sign in the zodiac, I believe, maybe. That's oh, an possibly. artist's soul. That's what they tell me. That's what it is. Oh boy. All right. Calm down. Calm uh, he down. charmed me. He <laughs> did. He charmed you. Fucking just fucking Willie over fucking here. Guy. <laughs> this fucking guy. Speaking of charming people, and I'm just gonna put this in because Heart of Dixie, yeah. when we were working on it, pilot, whatever, they had the whole storyline planned out. Yeah. And old Willie here came yeah. in. Yeah. And they were like, we're gonna pivot. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't Zoe and George, it became Zoe and Wade. Oh, yeah. really? It was yeah. originally supposed yep. to be George was my love interest. Not the right choice. No disrespect to yeah, no. Scott. Zero. Or anyone. It just wasn't like, the move. We had great chemistry. Like it was so much fun and it just went a different way because old charming pants over that here. Was it. Yeah. Man, just fucking, rolled in without just thinking. Wormed my just way fucking in wormed there. his way in. <laughs> but that we had so much fun. We had a lot. Especially of fun, that man. pilot. We it just, was really I just rewatched most of it because my what? wife had never seen it. Oh, <gasps> So no she, way. And she's like a total, she's like an inveterate binge watcher of all kinds of like <laughs> random shit. Right. And, uh, and yeah, anyway, she, she got, she got Did really she into it. it. Yeah. She, it's like 100% her kind of show. Up her alley. Like, I love that. Her, the show that she's that, seen though. a gazillion, it's like Gilmore Girls. Yeah. She had yeah. seen a yeah. bazillion times. So many people come up and, and say uh, that they, you know, cause yeah. it's such a feel good show, feel good show. Right. I really feel like they should reboot it. I know we all do. I love that we all still mm-hmm. love each other yeah. and like support each other and would totally Absolutely. do it and have fun because we had a really we good had group. A fucking ball, we had a dude. good time. And I, lo- I mean, and you know, I've become like super close with Lila. Yeah, and, I know. Um, Lila's the so, best. She yeah. created the show, showrunner. No. Also, what I'll say is Wilson and I were on the OC together. <laughs> I know. Wasn't that like one of your first parts? <laughs> Can we not go? Yeah, it was. No, we're going to go there. We're, I already did your po- your OC podcast. Oh, this is you a different went- podcast. Oh Wilson. my God. You still have PTSD from it. Why? What happened? I got fired from the OC. <laughs> what? The, For why? Because I was a fuck up, man. Because I- You want to fuck? You just- Well, yeah. No. How? <laughs> I was, it was my first job. I didn't know how to read a call sheet. And, oh, no. I know it's a sad story. It's uh, not like you were a fuck up. Just- well, yeah, except for it's like, it's it's all indicative of the same stuff. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to ask for help. I don't know how to ask questions because I feel like it reflects badly on me or it makes me look stupid. Aww. So uh, basically, I didn't know how to read a call sheet. A PA had been like, this is back before email. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was back before it email. It wasn't before email existed, <laughs> they had to but I didn't check, like, I didn't yeah, check yeah, yeah. my email every day right. at that time. Like right. I would check like once a week, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, they didn't, I don't think they sent you call sheets via email is what I'm trying to say. They, they deliver them to your you house. Scripts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, we went into a weekend and I didn't get a call from the PA. Uh-oh. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'm not working on Monday. And, uh, and I was living in the time in like this basement <laughs> apartment in Atwater Village that had, I didn't have cell reception. And I like, you know, woke up at 10 a.m., fucking <laughs> emerged from my cave. And like all of a sudden, like 400 messages on my phone. Oh, and they no. were shooting up in Malibu, like deep Mal, at Pepperdine, I guess. Um, and the fucking, I was, I was supposed to be there at like 6 a.m. It was already like 10 and then I had to go to Malibu, which was like an hour and a half away. So I ended up showing up to, by the time I got to set, it was like five, some six hours late. <laughs> it was like bad. I walked onto set. They had given an extra, my part for the, for that, the scene or whatever. Eeks. And when I got onto set, some dick producer literally initiated a standing ovation for the extra <gasps> in front of me. <gasps> that's <laughs> like, so to, mean. Yeah. Oh, that's so and then And they had brought me to set, like put me through like fucking makeup, all that stuff, brought me to set, made me like watch this fucking standing ovation. And then they were like, okay, you're wrapped. 
Was and it you're Josh fired. Schwartz? No, it wasn't Josh. Just, jo- yeah, 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 no, Josh was great, but no. it was some other, you know, old white guy, whatever. Oh um, no! Wow. Anyway, and, so you didn't get to work? No, he no, did. that was that was like the last day of the. Sh- that was the last day I was. No, we to had but that teams. day you didn't yeah. work. That was the that was the last day I was supposed to be filmed. We had already filmed other Got it. stuff. Yeah, okay. no, he's in the show. Like, yeah, yeah no, scenes. I know that. I think, yeah, but yeah. there was supposed to be. I remember, like, I think it was supposed to be like a recurring arc or something like that, which obviously was fucking no moss. Eeks. And, yeah, yeah. But you anyway, whatever. Look at and then you were there. And you look were at in me now. Oh, yeah. Years later, did you yeah. cry? Uh, you know, I think you may have shed a tear. I don't think I cried. I think I was, you know, humiliated. Yeah. My agents ended up dropping me. Fuck. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I was, that's uh, a little extreme. Yeah, I don't I like mean, that. It was, I don't know. I mean. Regret's tough. Have you gotten to that part in the David Beckham documentary yet? I've gotten to that part in life. <laughs> so I don't need to see it in a David Beckham documentary. I'll tell you that You've much. You've gotten to that part in life I don't yet. need David Beckham to tell me about regret. Oh my gosh. <laughs> regret is painful. Yeah, regret sucks, man. And I don't believe in regret. Yeah, but have I you ever in, done anything where yes, you no, I believe in, felt it? I believe, yeah, of course. <laughs> She's like, I don't fucking care. I don't fucking and doesn't this is where we matter. find out that Rachel is a, a serial killer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I have no empathy or, no, yeah. I just, I think that, I don't like the word regret. I like that, you, of course, people make mistakes. Right. But you learn from it. I don't like to, Hold on to them. Yeah. Have you ever experienced it though? Like a deep regret? Like fucking, mm, I regret yeah. that choice or that. I'm sure. Yeah, of course. I can't think of you any. can't see it on her. Yeah, 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 I'm no. not feeling it. What do you mean? I'm not feeling it. It sounds like somebody who's like spent hours standing in the mirror answering this question to herself. <laughs> Rachel, do you know what it's like to feel? Re- yes, I, yeah. I know what it's like <laughs> to feel regret. Oh man, where this is real grim, Rachel. You are outing yourself, yeah. sister. <laughs> and we have video Everybody now. Everybody has regrets, okay? I don't, my brain just can't like fire off examples. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that fair? Okay. Don't sure. fucking no. look at each other like that. No, right. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> yeah. Of course. No, obviously it's not, the, the name of the game is not to like dwell on it, but no. yeah. I would also like to clarify that like getting fired from uh, the OC is not like one of my like big life like regrets, you know, but. It's not? No. <laughs> <laughs> that one would stick <laughs> Definitely with me. not. You have one with the OC. I have an OC regret. What's your OC regret? Oh, this was a pain <laughs> for me. Okay. So Josh Swartz wrote uh-huh. me a part. Uh-huh. It was like one line uh-huh. and my reps made me turn it down. Because it wasn't a big Because it wasn't part. big enough. And they were like, wait for something bigger. They were like, wait for something bigger. Like you're not taking co-star parts at the moment, blah, 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 blah. And so I was like in over my head with them. Like yeah. I felt like they were too big for me. So I felt like I had right. to, to do what they said. Right, yeah. And I did. And then no other parts ever came along. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a regret. Yeah. It was a lesson. It was a regret. Don't tell her I, what her regrets are or not. <laughs> that was a regret. <laughs> Let's have fun. Okay. Let's have a little fun with Wilson. Oh, let's have fun with Wilson. Kay. You guys have like actual cards yeah. with fucking okay. Look at us. We're professional. You guys look very professional. Don't we? Yeah, you do. Yeah. What can you say during sex that you can also say at the dinner table? More. Yeah. Yeah. That works. <laughs> that works. If you had to get hypnotized for one thing, what would it be? Uh I don't I pass. I don't know. Pass. It could be to start something, it'd be quit something. It could be right. anything. All right. He I mean, passed. at the moment, coffee, I guess, but I'm just kind of back on the sauce in an unfortunate way. Yeah, Snooze. I get it. Yeah. Snooze answer. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> what movie would depict your life? Like a movie that's already been made? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't write us a whole <laughs> Don't movie right, us now, a movie we'll right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fade up from black. <laughs> <laughs> you would do a young boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, what movie depicts me? Uh, fuck, I don't know, man. These are fucking weird questions. That's uh, why we do it. Okay, all right. Um, we'll come back to that. Dazed one. and confused. Dazed and confused. No, <laughs> uh, I'll come back to that. All one. right, fine. Go. If you weren't an actor, what would you be? Um, I don't know, maybe like a teacher. I was gonna say professor. Yeah, a teacher. It's or the like, sweater. It's giving professor. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's giving um, professor. Or, I don't know, or like, uh, 
something outdoors. Mm-hmm. Totally. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> like it's <you're> like <laughs> like I li- I legitimately thought about like doing um uh like like wilderness training. Ooh, That's what I'm saying. Like, like I yeah. fully see you yeah. like adult scout, like yeah, fucking yeah. exactly survivor man, right, right. <laughs> just like in it. What's the uh, Bear that outward bound? Do you remember outward bound? Yeah. Do you guys ever you know what's the it movie is? that depicts your life? Not the Disney no, version. No, no, no. That's a <laughs> oh no no, no 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 not the movie no. Outward Bound. No, there's a program called Outward Bound. <laughs> what are you talking about? I think there's like a cartoon Outward Bound. <laughs> there is. Right? There's a movie called Outward Bound. I think. Oh, no, Homeward oh, Bound. Homeward yeah, Bound. Homeward Bound. Homeward Bound. Yeah, she's like, that's yeah, yeah, your Homeward Bound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Homeward Bound. Anyway, whatever. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Same yeah, thing. Outward Bound what? It's like a- It's like a wilderness training thing for teenagers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, I just spit. Yeah. I was excited. Uh, was that me or you? I don't know. You. It's oh. your last day on earth. What are you eating and what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm probably eating pizza mm-hmm. or or spaghetti or like pasta. And now I'm probably like hanging out with my daughter in nature somewhere. Oh, you know, like that's by a river. Sweet. By a Where river. are you getting mm-hmm. pizza from? There's a place in Echo Park that is legitimately Wait, which the best one? pizza I've ever had. Which what one? is it? It's called Quarter Sheets Pizza Club. Quarter Sheets. Oh my Quarter God. Sheets. I fucking Didn't you wanted get to go that? there for so long. I want to no. say that oh. now it's blown up, but I was an early adopter. Of my course. wife and I, yeah, we were, we've been on the Quarter on Sheets it. jock for like oh, well over a year. Now, like literally within the last like month, they've been on like every top 10 list of every- I'm sure. Mm. I did but, hear about it like a year ago for what it's worth. Mm, okay. But I haven't mm, been. Whatever. I heard okay. about it. <laughs> but I haven't um, been. But no, it's, it's like- the food itself is phenomenal, but the whole like little, it's like a such like a, it's such a vibe, the whole place. Oh, and it's awesome. lovely. We could go there tomorrow. You know, we're going to be in a no, park. Long Let's lines now. Well, whatever. What's yeah. your biggest panty dropper? <laughs> <laughs> like dropping your my own? panties? I knew you was going to say that. Like my panties? <laughs> uh, yeah. Is that what you mean? Either or however yeah, you want. What, however like, you what, what interpret yeah. it. my panties down? Yes. To the well, knees. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's my biggest panty dropper? <laughs> I don't Panty know. dropper? Uh, Panty dropper. Fuck, man. He's blushing. Yeah. <laughs> Someone brings you food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Quarter sheet. Like quarter, quarter sheets, sheet. Bingo. Yeah. You'd be like, and pepperoni we're done pizza, here. and my G string is on the, <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> what would you do if you found a dead body in a hotel room? <laughs> I mean, call fucking authorities. It was obviously what you find a hotel, a dead body in a hotel room, and you like walk away. You what are the You're what like, are other answers to this? There are other answers. There are other answers. And we're always shocked. Uh, okay, I want to talk to some of these people. Yeah. Jesus Christ, <laughs> fucking lunatics! If aliens. I thought you said if anally. I was like, okay, wow. You're, you're, you're like, gonna all fucking right, start out if anally. <laughs> if anally. If anally. <laughs> if anally. <laughs> if What's aliens. your favorite finger? Oh. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> what is? Oh, uh, well, I, the smallest one. <laughs> Stop it to pee, please. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna pee my pants. If aliens landed on Earth, who would you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't ask this. It's so stupid. Who would you? Who comes up with these? Do you guys come up with these? We do. Okay. (laughs) Who would you recommend they talk to? (laughs) I'd recommend they come on this podcast. (laughs) You two knuckleheads. (laughs) Why? They're like, this is this is 21st century America. (laughs) Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. So alien, if you had to adopt one celebrity, who would it be? If I if I had to adopt one celebrity? Uh, um, I'm dying. Wow. <laughs> I had to adopt a celebrity. That's a good question. Oh, we got a good one now. That, that is we'll a good one. We'll give this one to the alien. To, like, yeah. for some reason, my first instinct is like, who do I want to save? Oh, that's <laughs> oh, good. Oh, great one. Like, Interesting. I'm like, who's like deeply troubled and I think I could like maybe get them on the right track. Oh, yeah. Boy. I don't know, man. Who? Um, who? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think, I guess maybe I don't know enough about celebrities. Um, I don't know, like Lindsay Lohan circa 2012. Like, Would that feel right in your house though? No. Okay. No, it would not. <laughs> uh, Imagine with your 
baby and your right. wife. Right. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. But then I'm thinking of like also like the kid from Jerry Maguire oh. at that age. Oh my God. Oh you yeah, know. that's a good one. You know. That you feels right. Like I want that kid yeah. 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 Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> what was this like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. What was your favorite song in high school? I mean, I listened to like, I was like big into like indie hip hop. So like, you know, what we called conscious hip hop at the time. Oh, I've never. Did we? Yeah. Oh, well, oh, yeah. We, like we sure Quest did. And, <laughs> no, it wasn't, but it wasn't like, I mean, I, don't get it wrong. I love Tupac. I was like a huge Tupac fan. Yeah. Um, but I, but I also just like listened to like, you know, Tribe Called Quest and De La sure. Soul yeah. and like, you know. Whatever. He's Diggable cool like planets. that. Same. I will say. Funny that you said, literally, what? when I said Diggable Planets, you said cool like that. And that was Diggable Planets. I didn't even hear yeah. you say Diggable I Planets. I was still on De La. Oh my yeah. God. Huh? 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 What? Yeah. What? Yeah. what? I know. I was going to say, still to this day, some of my favorite songs you introduced me to. Oh. Wilson's very good with music. Yeah. Oh, good to know. Give you a little though, credit. Yeah. Well, you're probably listening to Baby A lot of Baby stuff. Beluga. Yeah. A lot of Raffi. Baby Beluga. Raffi. I sang that to Pryor all the time when she was a baby. Aww. I know. It's a it's a good one, man. It is baby, a good one. Baby Beluga is a, a fucking winner. Well, this was… I'm so happy that you came. This was a lot of fun, man. Yeah. So much fun. It's always yeah. good. It's good to see you guys. Having good you friends. Too. I feel like the last time I saw you, you were hanging out at the back of a golf cart on the Warner Brothers <laughs> lot. <laughs> oh my God, wait. We have to talk about yes. that really quickly. Yes. Oh, we should play that for his episode. We should play that for his episode. Sure. Still one of my favorite that things was the best. ever. Yeah. That was so… And you and your brother wrote it. Yeah. Call your Me brother Doctor. made the music too, my right? Brother, I wrote it. My brother made the music. I yeah. came to yeah. your apartment. It was yeah. like in K-Town Koreatown. or something. Yeah. You were in my brother's closet. I was in his brother's closet <laughs> recording yeah. this fucking song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how far we've all come. How far we've all Seriously. come. I'm still recording things in closets. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, it's, I fucking love it. It was so much fun. And I'm so happy I, we did I that. I appreciate, I can see with clear, uh, with clear, with more clarity, I should say, um, that your gameness was, uh, was truly um, special because a lot of people uh, are not game to put themselves in a yeah. potentially compromised position um, in, in this uh, <laughs> industry. Because I, yeah, right. Hey, oh. <laughs> well, fuck it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you did it. You were, oh, I was so down. Yeah, it was you were so, so down, fun. And, and fucking, yeah. And it was a blast. And then, you know, like when, and the thing that proves itself out time and time again is that, like, you know, when people do are actually willing to take those risks, it's usually worth it, except for, um, the we are the world that uh, oh, the that imagine, that, yeah, the I, imagine. You know what? I don't we, think that was a risk, was ooh, it? I don't know. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't think they knew it was a risk. Right. I think well, they thought they were they sharing. Thought, yeah. This just came up the other day, and it did. people were asking, like, if, <gasps> if you were part of it. If I did it, and oh Teresa, god. I was like, what? <laughs> oh god. Yeah. yeah. There's certain yeah. certain email lists you're glad not to be on <laughs> <laughs> that you thought you once wanted to right, be on. Exactly. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> missed out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. No, but that we have to rewatch that. Holds yeah, up. let's rewatch it. It holds up. We do good work, Wilson. Yeah. yeah. You in particular. But no, yeah, no, no. so much fun. What so much the, history. My favorite line is the uh which one? Uh give a pap smear with your oven, oven in, in, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he really like, I love that one. It's this is my like favorite. fucking so random and stupid. It's, Dugan, here's what's crazy. So I'm still good good friends yeah. with Dugan. He's like a big commercial director now. But um, he has spent the. I'm like pained to say it looks like it's it just maybe is falling apart. But he spent the last five years getting very close to making a very legit um, Vanilla Ice biopic. Oh wow! What? Like got all the rights to his music. He spent a t- <gasps> ton of time with Ice. He had actors attached. They had like a Dave Franco was producing it. Like they had a twenty million dollar oh budget. Like no, he fucking segued hard into fucking no. oh my yeah. God. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. which is like you know his total sweet spot. But um, that's anyway, so it looks funny. like maybe it's not happening. But oh no, uh, I hope it happens. I do too. I do too. Yeah. He's like a suit. I mean, he's a legitimately extremely talented director. He was so and also cool. Just like and a, his wife. Yeah, his wife Bethany. So talented. Just like very creative, mm-hmm. and, and also just like he's one of the funniest people I know too. And. Um, yeah, anyway. 
the world needs more of his stuff out there. So yeah, it'll awesome. happen. I hope it happens. I I have faith it'll happen. We'll see. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us. We love you, Wilson. Yeah, thanks. it's good to see you, man. <laughs> So, okay, yes, Olivia's still not here. She's still gone from when we recorded the intro. (laughs) She's still gone from when we recorded the intro. She's in the hospital, though, with Shepard. I guess we can tell people because he has RSV and Shepard, because of some of his stuff, it hits him harder. He's doing okay, but um, that's where they are. So that's why she's not here. Um, We normally would be bringing everyone a holiday episode around this time. But the, I mean, we the show must go on. The show must go on. We are decorated for Christmas. We have a centerpiece of a tinsel tree. Yeah, where did you get that? It's a homemade craft, Rob. I can teach you. Can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are decorated for the holiday. And we're dressed festively. I'm in PJs because what's more Christmassy than PJs? I've, I've broke out my beanie. Because you said you walked in the door this morning and you said, I had a feeling you would have a beanie on. I needed to match. You needed to match. Do you always want to match me? Yeah, that's usually Are you my the plan. Danny DeVito to my Schwarzenegger? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> um, Rob. Yes. What are your holiday plans? Um, we are escaping L.A., we we decided Escaping. to take a last minute trip. Yeah, and we're gonna fly up to Seattle on Christmas Day. On then, let me ask you something. Yeah, are flights cheaper on Christmas Day? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, I don't know because I feel feel like people a lot of people probably don't fly on Christmas Day. I, well, I usually have a rule that I don't like to travel during the holidays because yeah. it's not worth. It's very hectic. We flew to Texas on Christmas Day last year, oh, yeah. and it was airport was empty. It was great. And then this year, we picked Seattle because uh, we could fly out of Burbank. <gasps> That's the dream. Mm-hmm. That should really dictate anywhere you go. Pretty much. I think I'm going <laughs> to exclusively start Travel, uh, traveling. Places that have direct flights from Burbank. Yeah. I support it fully. I will be flying, not on Christmas Day. I will be in the hubbub. <laughs> the great white north. The Great White North, yes. And I will be enduring, ho- I almost said hospitals, airports. Sorry, Olivia on the brain. <laughs> uh, how cold does it get? In- it gets freezing. Now, not just freezing. So like when you go beyond freezing, it's freezing. <laughs> so below 32 degrees. Absolutely. Just- They'll be like, well, it's Celsius up there, so I always have a hard time. I feel like I have something in my nose. <laughs> I always it's have a hard time. hanging out. Is it? Yeah, you got like a big booger. Rob, do I? Yeah, you got. it's like lower above your lip now. <laughs> Rob, do you know in the shower yesterday, I had like a little mini bloody nose, and I've never had one before in my life. I don't think I've ever had a bloody nose either. I'm not, yeah, like there's people that just get bloody noses. Yeah. I don't. Were you like digging around and had some blood? No, Briar and I took a steam shower because Briar's also sick. And you know when you go and you try to get like clear it out, mm-hmm. like a little blood came out. I don't know if I'd call that a bloody nose. Though. <laughs> I don't think it. I don't some, think it. Clarifies. You had some blood in your snot. Yeah, <laughs> that happens. But it was like more than like you know it was a little, but it wasn't a full bloody nose. <laughs> Glad to hear. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it gets like, so it's Celsius up there and I have the hardest time converting, but it'll be like 18 below. I don't know what that means. means (laughs) I know that I think once it goes negative, the conversion also gets harder. It does. Cause zero and 32 are the same. So 32 is freezing and Fahrenheit zero and Celsius is the same as 32, but then. So it's not quite as bad as it sounds. No, it can be for sure. Especially. Yeah. Because it's not like we're like in a city. We're even like further north. In lots of snow? Yes. I don't do great with the cold. It, that's, that checks out. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I wear like big down jackets in like 60 degree weather. <laughs> but you're Chicago, so you do better. Are you going to eat any good food in Canada? Mm-hmm. In the small town Canada that you're going to be in? You know what I love? 
Briar's great grandmother is 97. Grandma Rose. Great. She got a great grandmother alive. Wait. Yes. Great. Yeah. 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 Oh. She has a great, she has a great grandfather alive too. She had another great grandma. She passed away this past year. Uh, but she has a great grandma, Rose, Grandma Rose. I love her. New Yorker. My favorite person. And she will be there. And that is what I am most looking forward to. <laughs> grandma Christmas. Yeah, she's the best. I love her dearly. Um, so I'm very happy about that. And she still cooks and stuff. That's Hayden's grandma or that's yours? Rose is Hayden's. And Briar's middle name is after her. Because she's the best. So you're you're mostly eating her food. We've got No, there's a whole collaboration of foods. Are you uh, bringing all your gifts that's, to Canada? Then that's the hard thing because that would require checking a bag and then that's a whole other thing. You're not allowed to check a bag. It just makes you spend more time at the airport. You have TSA though, right? No. Why not? I don't know. What's it's my so problem? It's so easy to get TSA. It's so yeah, quick. I know. What's my problem? Did you get it at Burbank? At Burbank? Your TSA pre-check I mean, thing? I got it at a facility that I didn't get it at the airport. You don't no. have to go to the airport to do it? No. There's like a there's a center that you go. They just do like a background check, fingerprint you, and then check you out. And Well, where's the link, Rob? <laughs> I think we I think you we send it to had me this two conversation. Years ago? <laughs> yeah, two years ago when you were traveling. Okay, if you could resend it, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, I think Natalie just finally did it and it was like she had the number within like a week. Okay, great. I will get on that in the new year. That's my resolution. That's your resolution. Yes. Yeah. Now, do you get presents? Because you're not with your family. Do you get presents for everybody and like send them? So we normally do like a secret Santa. Oh, yeah. Where we just assign. Because there's nine grandkids. That's a lot. Yeah, too many people. Well, the um, kids should all get gifts. I feel like Secret Santa should be for the adults. Well, no, we 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 skip adults. There's all that means. Oh, there's also okay. There's siblings plus their significant others. Too many. So it's too many gifts plus my parents. Um, so we normally mm -hmm. everyone gets assigned a kid or a pair of kids, and then we just do like a big gift to that kid. Also, we don't. I don't, pair of kids? Well, everyone has two kids. Okay. So like. Oh, like you get this we'll get family. my sister's family. You have your sister's family? Well, this year, for whatever reason, my sister's decided that everyone gets gifts. What do you mean? Everyone, every kid gets a gift from everyone. So we. Oh, like I just said. Yeah. So now you have to get nine gifts. And now we have to get a bunch of gifts or for the boys, gifts. which we don't. They don't need more toys. We don't want more toys. I hear you. You know what was so awesome? We did this um, toy drive and Briar and Winnie and Stella, you know, the girls, they went and they handed out the toys and everything. And it was just, I think it's important for the kids to see. That's what we normally, with Calvin, make him like go through his room yeah. before Christmas and like clear out and donate a That's, ton of toys. Yeah. Because he's run out of space. Yeah. No, it's, it's, yes. I think the clean out before Christmas is a good idea. So yeah, we we got, they got like one gift from us. Well, that's not true. But one gift? That was, that was originally the plan, but then there was some like, uh, kids toy store or online shop that was going out of business that we liked a lot. <gasps> so Which one? Mapa Mundi kids. Okay. I don't know. I know I like I like supporting all those. Yeah, we, there was like a local shop. That's awesome. There was a we were at um, a mall for the toy drive and they were running out of toys, so we went in to get more toys for the kids. And it was like this little independent toy store, and I think we like really just cleared out too. Well, there were so many people contributing and helping out, and Briar wound up working behind the counter and bagging <laughs> toys. <laughs> put her to work. Put her to work. Yeah. But the kids, they like, loved it. How has your uh, elf on a shelf been going? Shh. He's in the other room, so we got to talk quietly yeah. about this. He's in the other room. What's yours named? Uh, Calvin named him Quago. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
And uh, this year's already been a little rough. We've Why? forgotten <gasps> maybe three or four nights already, and it's only like should I close the door? It's only two weeks in. <laughs> You've forgotten four nights. Oh, good. Three to four nights we forgot and. He's like, he just must really like it up on that shelf. I guess that's why he's off on a shelf. Yeah, they do. They get positions that they really get attached to. Yeah, and then they just don't move. Or mm-hmm. like he got stuck. He got stuck one of the nights. He got stuck. Um, North Pole, that's Briar's name. He's currently stuck inside um a wrapping paper roll. She hasn't she thing. hasn't found him yet. Um, do you help her find him or um sometimes, but every morning I'm like, I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you gotta you gotta play along. That well, I wonder where he is. I'm like we're whispering because Briar's homesick and she cannot hear what we're talking about. Yeah, she's in the other room. She's in the she's other room. And the door's open. <laughs> I hope she's not listening. <laughs> but I don't. I don't want her to stop believing in any of it. It's getting close, though. I mean. Like she's we gonna be made, that weird kid at like thirteen stop that it. still believes. Stop. <laughs> we made her Santa list the other day. She wants a checkered skateboard, which I thought was pretty rad. Yeah, Calvin asked for a guitar. Oh yeah, is he getting one? He's getting a guitar. What size are you getting? Just one of the mini Jackson mini guitars. Is that? I don't know. I learned that they come like half, three quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all they had left at Guitar Center. Oh, <laughs> so that's what he got. It, well, it was like different color options which he's very particular he likes blue okay so i had to get like a blue cable as well (laughs) it's an electric guitar yeah you didn't get him an acoustic no because he um he takes music lessons yeah he's doing uh piano and guitar that's so cute that's like where well it's like full setup and he just gets to pick basically what he wants to that's really sweet fiddle around on each week and it's been mostly piano and guitar. So he's got a piano already. He does? Where is it? It's in his room. Oh, like he's a little electric practice like keyboard? 10 minutes a day. That's sweet. Briar has a guitar recital on Sunday. She's going to play the first two lines of Ode to Joy. Do you call them bars or are bars just the little sections? The first two notes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but if it's like the whole... The whole line. A bar is just the... F- right? Before there's like a thing... Sounds right. You don't know? I don't I don't read music no. <laughs> oh. Oh god. Yeah. That sounds right though. That sounds right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So like a good 15 seconds. Yeah. That's enough. It's really sweet. Yeah. Maybe longer than 15, maybe 30. Because she's going to go slow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe but start over Sunday. a few times. But she's really nervous and it's really sweet. Where it's where's it at? She take I don't know. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> but it's for like her school, or it's no, it's a like music a music class. school where she takes lessons. It's having recitals. a little lower pressure then because it's just people from the school there. Yeah, not from her school. Yeah, yeah, right from the lessons. But she does have her winter concert next week. It's scary. And we have her school holiday party, and I'm a room parent, so I'm responsible for treats. I'm making these little snowmen out of powdered sugar donuts. Powdered donuts. That's what they're called, right? Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, wait. (laughs) Yes, which I have to get. And a game that you're going to help me assemble. (laughs) (laughs) Are you, you should make my cookies. Oh, well, I don't have time to do that. You should make them for me. (laughs) I'm making them today. You are? Shouldn't you have made them to bring here? Probably. I was going to. I was going to make them this morning when we were going to record this afternoon. You were going to. I love the visual of you baking. (laughs) Do Mm. you wear an apron? I do have an apron. Does it have a saying on it? No, we have a bunch of aprons, actually. Um, Explain. I don't know. Got one with like a Gordon Ramsay one. Uh, Fabio, the Top Chef guy. Got one from him. You just have a lot of aprons given to you from people? Yeah, as like gifts of like one from my old boss that he got one for me in like Italy. <laughs> That's got some like crazy logo on it. Um, got a lot of aprons. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe you can share a photo. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to try Olivia one more time. Yeah, I have to go to Whole Foods after this and get 
all the stuff ingredients. for your. Hello. <gasps> Hi, you answered. Uh huh. Hi. We're, yeah. We are just wrapping up, so we just. I thought I'd try you one last time. Oh, you guys are recording. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. I I told everybody that you are in the hospital with Shepard. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, Shepard's doing a little bit better right now. And I know this because he ate a piece of bacon. (laughs) (laughs) And that is a good sign because he hasn't eaten in two days or three days. And so he his first piece of bacon and then he just asked for toys. So he's got a handful of bad guys (laughs) and that is a good improvement. Did you explain what was going on? I said that he has RSV and, you know, things hit Shep a little harder. (laughs) Yeah. And you can hear Jeff coughing in the background. Um, Everybody's sick. (laughs) Yeah. Jeff's got it now too. What did he say? He said Jeff has it now too. Jeff has it. Elliot has it. Everybody's sick, but with Shepard, it's like really scary when he gets it because his oxygen saturation tips and it's really scary. And they told us they're keeping us another night because they need to monitor him while he sleeps. So they're doing IVs, breathing treatments, oxygen, and all of that stuff. So, ah, yeah. I'm right. sorry I couldn't be with you guys today. I love you so much. We love you and too. And we told everybody we don't do our holiday episode this year like usual because of circumstances. But yeah, what are you guys doing without me? That's so creepy. <laughs> well, it's we're so just creepy. Rob and I, doing? Rob and I are just talking about riveting things. Yeah. We do have a Christmas decoration on the table that Rachel made herself. <laughs> Did you get all the board games that? We were going to play? Yeah, we played all of them. They were great. We played all of them. No, I think we're going to return everything. We did have things planned, everybody, but we'll just save them for next year. I'm sorry. That's not very festive. It's not very festive, but I kind of wish Rob still wore the elf costume and just was (laughs) chilling in the elf costume. He didn't? Oh, you guys really didn't? You didn't pull it together? I'm in PJs. I figured that's Christmassy. I'm I'm wearing a beanie. (laughs) <laughs> and I got a Did you Christmas shirt. That we had all that we had a whole Christmas episode planned, and then RSV hit. RSV hit. Why didn't you guys just do it? Because it's not broad ideas without you. Should we do a Valentine's episode, guys, yeah, to I make mean, up for do, yeah, holiday, and still put Rob in the elf costume? <laughs> I was gonna. Yeah, like, why don't you just go do it? <laughs> give us all RSV before because our trips. I'm not leaving Shepard. Yeah, you're not leaving Shep, Shep. Jeff, why don't you just go do it? That's cute. Jeff's like, why not just go? We're both watching Dracula movies all day. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> We're watching Hotel Transylvania right now. Oh, okay. Got it. I thought you meant like real Dracula, and I was like, that tracks. <laughs> oh, no. No, I can't leave him. I love you guys, but I just can't do it. No, I know. You're baby. All right. right, Well, well, we're happy we got you on the phone. All right. I miss you guys, and I'm sorry I ruined your Christmas. (laughs) We love you so much, and we hope Sheppy feels better. I want to hear Rob say it. (laughs) Rob. Say what? Tell her you love her. We love you so much. We. Let's just say I love you. I love you. You, you should see his too. face. Because <laughs> it's true. He just needed. He just needed permission to say it. Yeah. All right. Oh love you. I love you. Bye. Okay, bye. We got our Christmas wish and miracle. Okay, everyone. Have a happy holiday. Thanks, Wilson, for coming on. Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. We will see you in 2024. 2024. Bye.